What's up guys? So today we're working on 1995 Nissan Sentra. So the vehicle came in with complaining the engine shaking, no power. As you can see, this is a four cylinder engine. As you can see in the video, the engine shake like uh, really, really, really bad shaking. So I killed the number one cylinder, the engine shut down right away, but that means that mean the cylinder number one is firing good, good fire. So let's start it and see what's wrong with this vehicle. All right, let me start it up again. And I already tagged, uh, quick tag cylinder number one by the drop tag, engine drop tag and the engine start right away and now we start again and check on number two three and four as you can see the engine taking bad like that but that means we have a gas mid fire and uh, it's shaking that level I believe this engine is running just like two cylinders. Let's see. Now, number two, how it responds. Also, when I take the, the spark the cable out, I heard the spark. That means we have the spark from the cylinder number two. Also, as you can see in the video, number three. What about number four? Yep. When I kill the number four, the engine start right away is same thing like number one. That means, like uh, I say, this engine running just two cylinders and see now what's wrong with the number two and number three we don't have the firing on those cylinders
number three, but the spark is stronger than number two. And in this case, maybe we need a roller, uh, cap roller set later. But now we have to deal with why is that mixed fire on those cylinders. So now I will check for the spot plus on this cylinder and see how it works by swap to another cylinder. This is the cylinder number one and this is the cylinder number two. Yep, I will take the spot plus from number two, the ones out. plus from cylinder number one. Yeah, this the spot plus seem to be new to me but look like someone involved here okay this is a cylinder number two spot plus I will put on number one and number one spot plus I put on number two the thing oh man it's in there okay and you can see after I install the number one spot plus and the rubber inside my socket Stay in there if you don't pay attention and later it rest it and you got a problem with firing on it also. Ay ay ay. Okay, what about number yeah let me push number one number two cable back. Number one back. Okay. Now three and number four yep the spot plus number three yep this is number three spot plus guy I put this right here okay and number four is spot plus Yes, all look new to me, but I don't believe the spot plus cut a problem. Okay, let's shoot the thing. Where the thing? Number three spot plug guys, I will put on number four now. Yep, the thing is still in here. I will fit that later. Uh, okay, I will put the cable back. And then start the engine and let you guys see that. Uh, problem for the spot plus. Okay, now the reason to 
tech number one no more. He uh, job tech tech only number two and number three. Okay. <laughs> Number two now. As you can see, nothing changed. Right? Number three, nothing changed. Okay, let me set off the engine. Okay. Okay, guys. In the case, we have a good spark. Uh, from the cable as you can see I take for the spot you can see in the video we have the spot here and number two number three also have both with the spark and we swap the spark plus to the cil another cylinder but the problem is not follow that means we have the mid fire on number two and number three caught by something else not uh, spark right we have the spark good spark no missing spark and now it's time for check for the fill and you can see mid fire dead mid fire uh cut by one of three reason no spark no fill or no compressor and we'll cut that mid fire all right and I don't I don't want to talk in the video with detail on it reason I mean like no feel no feel sometimes it get feel injector sometimes it mission uh, feel injector control I, I don't want to talk that it will, will be long uh, in the video and now time for me to check for the feel right I, I don't need to check I don't really need to to check for the fuel pressure or something like that because the engine and you can see it start right up that means we have the good fuel pressure and uh, we have now we have to check for the fuel by fuel injector control next step I will check for the fuel injector power as you can see from on the right side you have the white wire and green something and you can see on this guy also the white wire on the right side and this should be hard for me yep also the white wire on the right side you can see in the video yep and another one here also the white wire okay and you know that's uh the fuel injector will share the power supply on the same color wires as you can see i'm sure the white wire is the power when the key on okay and then in order I have to disconnect the number two to connect the connector and the number three and I have to remove the brackets but the body cable okay and let everything ready and you guys can see that okay in the case to remove the throttle body cable you see I disconnect the cable here from the throttle body and uh, keep the cable in the this brackets and then 12 millimeter bolt down there I already removed and two uh, 10 millimeter nuts right here removed but in this case if you just remove the nuts on both sides and you got the problem is you see down there you cannot move out and just stay like this see the bottom 
it will heat the valve cover and then you have to remove the stud on one side by locking two nut like this and make sure between of them is tight and then turn the inside one uh, counterclockwise to remove the stud and then now you can able to remove the bracket with the cable right there turn it like this and take it out right yep when you uh, go learn from mechanics it's some uh, streak like this you have to think and you have to see uh, the trainer doing what and then when you do your own you do yourself you know how to do it right so now I try to disconnect more easier I'm gonna be able to put my hand in here to press the clip it seems a little hard maybe oh yeah okay let me turn off the camera and remove them both number two and number three and maybe you guys see that okay guys I already have number two films after disconnected and number three let go inside the car and turn on the key and the measure see we have what missing there yep the key is on right now yeah it's was on okay I don't worry much about the power see because we have the power on number one and number four I use my tag light yeah I use this ground and make sure your tag light is good connection as you can see we have a good connection right there all right so as you can see the white wire on my right side right hand and the white wire on my right side the key is on now I just touch the the pin here yeah as you can see I have the power here on number two and the power maybe here on number three yep that means we have the power fee and one more thing now I remove my tag light to uh, positive battery and also double check the connection here is good by touching the ground anywhere yep to see that yep my tag light connection right there good and now this time make sure everything here clear I can start the engine and uh, check for all the fuel computer control the fuel injector by start the engine As you can see the engine seems to be start right up Okay, my headlight is still with the message, right? Okay, yeah, I will check for uh, Yeah, you can see in the video. We have the computer control the fuel injector number two. Yeah, control fuel injector number three. Yep, and what else? Okay, let me turn off the engine and go further. Okay guys, next step, I will measure the fuel injector resistance. So to see if it open coil or too high resistance, if the resistance is good, we have to go further to see when the fuel injector has been controlled, if the spindle inside the fuel injector moving or stuck 
you know if it's stuck close it also doesn't work it doesn't have fuel like you can see right now the, the fuel injector angle that way it seems a little hard and you can see we have two pin in there and two pin in there and I have to use it uh, leave by uh, homemade I will put it in there and move it out here I can measure from here okay let me get ready and you guys can see that okay. I don't think it's easy to put here I don't want to spend too much time on in the video as you see it's very hard okay let me turn off the camera put it in and measure as you guys see that okay I have uh, the leash connected on the field adapter number three and you can see you see the right connection for me so and we have the leases out here as you can see I use the ohm meter uh, turn it to ohm make sure right now you see an automatic okay and one see how many ohm reading here okay oh yeah right now 133 ohm that bad at all I don't know somehow this film that the too high resistance and usually film that uh, it's about like 13 14 uh, ohm but film that the number three a 135 ohm right now so that no reason to go farther than that to check for the spindle moving I don't need it because the fuel injector is it should not 336 ohm like that okay I will off the camera move the lead to number two and let you guys see how the number two fuel injector reading okay guys the lead connected to fuel injector number two right now and as you can see uh, right now number two it read in 68.6 ohm so no question about that the fuel injector is bad uh, they are out of breath so we have to replace the fuel injector for sure I will back with this video when I have the new fuel injector uh, install and see how the engine run okay in this case I can I can move the lead to the good film that the number four right here for you guys see the see how many ohm breathing okay on the good on the non good film that okay guys the lead move to the non good film that the number four and you can see on the meter reading to 11.9 is 12 ohm. that good fuel injector I get a brand like 12 14 something like that it it more than that it cannot doesn't work no more okay in order to remove the fuel injector you can see we have to remove the up, upper intake manifold to access the screw right here you can see on this fuel injector it has two screws to hold the fuel injector in place one right here one right there and this angle is fake up that way we have to use the screw this direction and we have to remove the upper intake manifold Okay guys, 
back with the upper intake manifold remote I put it right there and I found on the throttle body and you can see someone in, involved here the water hose right here to uh, get uh, idle control valve working on the throttle body if someone is unclaimed and leave it like that that's a very danger okay what you doing man okay uh, back with this horse you see I don't know homeowner or uh, vehicle owner or mechanics they leave the water hose clam outside and not clam yet just turn up the hose in and then leave it like that because look like they don't understand when the engine run when it's hot the coolant will build up the pressure in you know in the upper lower radiator hose will you can feel you crack on the hose and you see pressure okay anyway when you remove the intake manifold you have to cover the hole like this before you drop something in it and it seems to be too late and the fuel injector i already have four on hand here you guys yeah from uh nissan fuel injector uh yannis torch something like that and let's see one in here you see the one in the car is that color and the one is come the new is a red color okay but anyway if it fits what the color doesn't matter and fuel injector now dirty you have to blow the air the dust like that yep before you remove the fuel injector you don't want the dust to get inside the hole okay and let me back with the fuel injector one by one to measure should not believe the new part guys you take some time a little time and check it out by measure the ohm law on the new fuel injector if they okay around 14 15 uh, ohm like that so you'll be okay to put them in and uh, if you put them in you don't measure anything you believe the new parts you truck the new part and then later it mid fire again check it out oh yeah bad new fuel injector and then you have to start over remove blah 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 like that it will be headed okay okay guys i have the ohm meter set up right there everything ready i have four fuel injector put right there yeah uh, i can take the ram on my hand as you can see and i will measure one by one and you guys look on the Milton meter and you see how it read it. Okay, the first one, eleven point six oh okay, that's good. The second one, 11.5, point six, it's the same, okay? And the third one, 11.6, as you can see on the meter, 11.6 right now. And the last one, 11.5. Yep, okay? Every time, you put the new part in I know this the OEM parts from the Nissan but I don't believe should not believe every one my friend even me I don't believe me too okay sometimes sometimes I believe me sometimes I don't believe me I should not believe everything should not believe everyone okay yep and what about the 
What about, sorry, what about the fume that could be moved? You know, the fume that they, they use a screw and you have to give by power like this. And you have to write a uh, fairly screwdriver head like this and make sure on the, if you use the, the hand screwdriver, you might mess up the, the screw, okay? Let me move on. Let's see that. We have one screw out here. Yep, another screw out here. And then you can see on the film deck that I have the cap like this and I have been removed. So now the fuel injector you can able to move it before you move it to take it around like this. Yep, you can see it turn right now. Yep. Okay. All fuel injector removed guys on number three fuel injector now. So on the new fuel injector before you install the lubricant uh, the seal here, the seal here and put it in and okay let me put all the new fuel injector back in, everything back on and then let you guys see how the engine run it. Okay guys got everything put back on don't forget any electrical connector uh, vacuum hose and all the bowl everything we remove we have to put it back and make sure that I tie them down uh, before you start the engine so one thing you see like right now I have four new fuel injector install but before you install the fuel injector new fuel injector you lubricant the O-rings on the new fuel injector when you put it in you have to prep the new fuel injector down all the way to get the, uh, the O-ring get in the place if you think okay it's hard to crack it out you try to put the cap back on and you think you screwed it out and then the screw will do will do its job the job and then crack the fuel injector down for you that you might be get a problem with the o-ring broken okay you see the new fuel injector put in if the o-ring everything good you can be able to twitch this back and forth back and forth like this it's easy if the o-ring it gets uh, stuck out or broken it seems to be hard to twitch back and forth back and forth like this and then it will be had it for you okay yep everything ready it's ready to start the engine and see how this engine running back with uh, its power or still shaking something like that now we have uh, everything done here but you have to drive it drive it start the engine and see how it works you guys can keep an eye on the engine and see how the engine steady or still shaking all right i will go inside the car and start the engine Uh, it could be run, the vehicle will back 
to the row and spend like the first day. Let me grab the engine and see how power it is. Okay, that's it guys. Uh, in this video, step by step, I show you guys how to diagnose on any case of misfire. Depend on, we go for the simple thing first. First check for us spark and then check for the fuel, uh, electrical control, something like that. And that's all we done today. Okay. Thanks for watching you guys. See you guys next time.